All right, our first online lecture finished on LinkedIn that we started in class together on Tuesday. Um, so we left off talking about what LinkedIn is and how companies utilize LinkedIn to connect with their customers and their potential customers. So where we're going to pick up this afternoon is talking about what type of content is best to post on LinkedIn. Um, and just like with Facebook, these are best practices. So it's not a... Uh, completed list or the only things you can post, but it's what tends to get most engagement um, and most interaction on on the site. So LinkedIn lends itself to uh, certain types of content because you're trying to reach that professional audience. Um, industry information, industry professionals are looking for specific types of information when they visit this platform. So they're looking for more professional and informative content. So they want to read ebooks, they want to find white papers and case studies. They're specifically looking for industry or specific company updates, and they're potentially even looking for job opportunities. So rarely are you ever going to see promotional information or casual updates on LinkedIn. Companies use this site to professionally network with their potential customers and with their current employees. And so LinkedIn actually recommends that companies use an 80-20 rule when posting. So for every one post that promotes your company, you should be posting four or five that provide information or benefit your followers. So not just updates about your own company, but sharing case studies about success in the industry or white papers about industry topics. Those types of pieces tend to get a lot of engagement and a lot of interaction. Um, in fact, when you start posting on LinkedIn, and some of these statistics are going to correlate very well with what we talked about um, on our Facebook discussion, but posts with a link tend to drive twice as much engagement. What's interesting about LinkedIn is that customers or page followers are willing to leave the site to go find other information. So for example, if you link to a case study or you link to a white paper, people will click that link. They don't mind leaving LinkedIn to go find information. They can come back to LinkedIn later. Um, we also find that on LinkedIn, when you post content with an image, comments are going to increase almost 100%. And video links result in a 75% higher engagement rate. So links, images, videos, all are beneficial to your LinkedIn content. As long as you're sticking in that professional voice with that professional content. So let's talk about how often companies should be posting on their LinkedIn page. Um, there's not a lot of data about this yet, but LinkedIn did publish their own guide to marketing on LinkedIn. Uh, and they report that 20 posts per month can help you reach about 60% of your audience. So they're basically stating that you need to be posting um, once per weekday. And we'll talk about the best days to post on LinkedIn here in a second in terms of standardized best practices. But you can imagine that because LinkedIn is so targeted at professionals, that the weekdays do tend to be the best times to post or the best days to post. So posting 20 posts per month is about once per day. Um, and that can be a really difficult feat because remember, on LinkedIn, we're requiring more in-depth posting and longer writing. Right? So if you're not if you're not directly writing an article in the LinkedIn page, you're linking out to a blog post or a white paper or a case study that you've written, right? That's relevant to your audience. So there's a lot more writing and content development there. Um, on that site. So 20 posts can get to be a little bit time consuming. So curated content is really important when you're using LinkedIn as one of your primary sites. Okay. So those in-depth longer posts that are linked do require those dedicated resources. And so here's an example of how that would work. So the top image that you see here is the post that's on uh, LinkedIn from Vivaldi Partners. And so they are talking about an article that they've written or a blog post that they've written on their own company web page. And so they have the uh, snip from the article there and the shortened link. Remember those short links we talked about. Um, and then you can see that they created an image that used a quote 
from the blog post where they're trying to drive people to. So they are looking for that increase in engagement, right? Links drive twice as much engagement and images and comments, um, images result in an increase in comments and shares, right? So they included their image there. And then you can see at the bottom how their blog post starts and directly relates to the content that they posted on the LinkedIn site there. So when should we be posting to LinkedIn? Um, and as a reminder, these are standardized rules. But 41% of LinkedIn visits are from mobile devices. So that's an interesting statistic because with Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and other social networking sites, we still see a majority of the visits from um, desktop or laptop computers, right? So not necessarily mobile devices. But with LinkedIn, they have one of the largest uh, visit rates from mobile devices. And people tend to read LinkedIn like they read the newspaper. So they're checking it in the morning before work or they're looking at it in the evening after work. Um, and so studies have found, a study by CoSchedule actually found that Tuesday through Thursday during the morning and evening commute times are the best times to post in order to get you the most engagement and the most interaction on your content. Right. And then a rule of thumb is don't post on the weekdays from 10 to 6 because most people aren't checking LinkedIn during the workday. These are business professionals who are working from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And so they're not taking the time out of their workday to go explore the site. So LinkedIn postings tend to perform a lot better if we're posting early in the morning or we're posting in the evening hours. Um, just so we're driving the content and we're posting when our consumers are actually watching. Okay. But remember, as with any Facebook site, we have to use our insight analytics to determine when our best time to contact our customers is. So you can see an example of the LinkedIn analytics page there on the right. And so our LinkedIn analytics page gives us information on exactly uh, how many impressions, clicks, and followers we got, how much engagement we got on each of our posts. So we can use that information to analyze the dates we post and the times we post to find the specific times that our followers are engaging with our content. So it's not always using that rule of thumb Right. Once we have enough data on our own site, we can become more and more specific. Okay. All right. So that wraps up our discussion on our organic LinkedIn content. Um, and again, that organic content is what we post um, that our followers see. Okay, but let's talk a little bit about paid LinkedIn advertising and how advertisers are using the paid platform in order to reach more followers for their LinkedIn pages. So just like with organic, that LinkedIn advertising is still best used for our business to business communications. It's best in that business to business setting and is a great way to connect people in the same industry or people who have the same job function. So what's interesting about LinkedIn is that they have the ability to target audiences based on their job description or based on their job title, even their level of authority within a company or their educational background. So there's lots of professional demographic data points that we can use to reach people on that site. Uh, and right now, LinkedIn has two different ad options uh, for companies. And the first set of ad options is for companies who spend less than $25,000 a year. And the second advertising option is for companies who spend over $25,000 a year. Right now, most of your companies are spending that under 25K, right? But you do have a lot of national advertisers who spend over 25K. So they get some special treatment. And we'll talk about some of the options that they get. But first, let's talk about the general ad options that work best for small and medium sized businesses. So these two ad options don't have that set budget level. So any business or any individual can use them to advertise. All right, so on LinkedIn, a company can opt to pay for text ads or sponsored ads. And a text ad is what you see on the top of that LinkedIn page in that red box and on the right hand side of that LinkedIn page um, in the red box. Those are both text ads. So they are small ads that appear at the top or the side of the page. They look like advertisements. They're on the side. They're usually paired with other advertisements and they're short. 
LinkedIn also gives you the option for a sponsored ad. And a sponsored ad is what you see in the main news feed of that LinkedIn profile in the orange box. And it is a post that fits right into the news feed of a LinkedIn page. So our friends over at Hootsuite are going to give us a few other details on our um, options for the under 25K option and the over 25K option. So you do have four videos that you're gonna watch. The first two, LinkedIn ad options and LinkedIn campaign structure and targeting, which you'll find in Hootsuite under the social marketing training section, both focus directly on the under 25K advertising platform. So you'll learn about text ads and you'll learn about sponsored ads. The next two videos are actually on lynda.com, which you can access by going through Unify. Right? And what's interesting is that LinkedIn does offer additional right, advertising options to their LinkedIn enterprise customers or those who spend more than $25,000 a year. So you can still do text ads and sponsored ads, but you also have the option to run a display ad and a sponsored in-mail. So display ads tend to be larger ads with images. And again, you'll learn about that in that lynda.com video, right? And you'll also learn about sponsored in-mail. So we talked about how companies can send in-mail organically one at a time to potential to their current followers. Well, sponsored in-mail allows you to blast an in-mail to lots of potential customers through the LinkedIn platform based on targeted demographics. All right, so four videos you'll watch. Uh, the first two, again, are on Hootsuite, and they talk about the under 25K uh, group of advertising. And then the second two on lynda.com talk about the over 25K group of advertisers. Um, and those videos will wrap up our conversation on LinkedIn. So make sure you watch those and then make sure that you come back and check out all of the content that you need to know for Twitter, which is the next social networking platform we'll discuss as part of our course.